What's up everybody? Hey. So it is officially, 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 officially week one. I know we titled our last video as week one in the van, but in reality we were just driving out to um, Phoenix to visit here, folks. Um, but we took like four days to do it, so it was fun. It was kind of part of the adventure. It was a whole lot of driving, not a lot of, I don't know, just kind of chilling and really getting into living in the van and all yeah. that stuff. And then we did a lot of visiting like around the holidays. It was Christmas and New Year's yeah. and all that stuff. So I got to hang out with my family for a while, which was nice. Yeah, but we did sleep in the van the whole entire time. So mm -hmm. that was actually a very big plus that we didn't have to worry about dirtying other people's sheets, not having our own bed, all this other stuff. So that was definitely a plus. <laughs> I just really liked having you guys and like the dogs with me. Usually when you go travel, you know, somewhere, you always can't bring everything that you love, but you know, getting used to having my entire home outside in the driveway <laughs> of wherever I was was really cool. Yeah, it was really nice. But anyway, besides that, we're kind of going to do something a little different this week. Um, I don't know, we're just going to kind of introduce ourselves. I don't feel like we've actually like fully come out and been like, hi, I'm Steve and I'm Sierra. You know, we've, we've never really done that yet. So um, we're just gonna take some time, do a little like, I don't know, talking thing, individuals, whatever we're gonna do there. But Get also- Get to know the people behind Karma Caravan. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But in case you guys are wondering, we are currently walking through Tonto National Forest. Um, it was gorgeous. just, yeah, it's too beautiful. But it was just about like an hour away from where Sears folks live. So we figured that would be a good place to kind of like really cut our teeth get out there and really just kind of delve into the wilderness where there is nobody around and um, see if we couldn't just last at least one full week in the van. That's no power, that's our own water tank, that's, you know, just the food we brought, everything. That way then we kind of have a bigger gauge so then we can, you know, if we need to, we can go back there and fix something or we can go back there and shower because we're absolutely grimy and we haven't figured that out yet. You know, some something there that goes wrong, then we have the ability to go back, so. Yeah, still a little bit of a like buffer room. We're still close enough to family, you know, that if anything were to go super wrong, you know, then we can- Safety just, net. Then we can go back and, and get all of the loose ends tied up. But yeah. so far so good, besides some, incidental messes you know due to the close quarters and stuff so far it's been pretty good yeah it's been great yeah. so anyway stay tuned and we will be introducing ourselves all right everybody we have been hiking for what, what, what are we calling it an hour probably not even probably like half an hour <laughs> but since we're from that below sea level place of new orleans where we're not used to this elevation there's no air up or here. hills this one's a little rough on us, but look at that view, y'all. Kind of worth it when you think about it, right? Something like that. The other thing that we've learned for the two little ones here is, it's funny, I was kind of making fun of these people in my mind. Uh, yesterday I saw somebody out walking their dog and um, they had booties on them. I was like, dude, why do you have booties on your dog? It's not even cold out. Realize I've now had to pick so many stickers out of the puppy's toes. So if you're ever out in the desert, Remember, Teflon booties for the puppies. Yeah, Teflon booties. Hi everyone, I'm Sierra. I'm uh, 26 years old. I'm from Indiana originally. Um, most recently I've come from New Orleans. That's where Steven and I were living together for about four years. And now I'm in Arizona currently with <laughs> no real home, I guess. Well, my home is on wheels now. Hi y'all. So, why we are here today, what we are doing. Um, introductions. I am Steve. I'm one of four out of Carmen Caravan, if you're including the puppies. It is me and Sierra, main proprietors of the entire thing. Puppies are just a bunch of freeloaded mutts. This is where you guys get the How Steve Met Sierra story. Eventually, I landed in Indiana, in Southern Indiana. We're gonna skip a whole bunch of stuff in my life. But I ended up in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, in Bloomington, Indiana, I was working at a, at a, at a outlet mall and, um, I had a friend who started working there. We met through mutual friends when we were still living in Indiana. Her name was Tay. Shout out to Tay. My girl, what up? Much love. Love you. And my best friend at the time kind of introduced me and him. She introduced me to Sierra. And it was funny because the first two times that me and Sierra met each other, we didn't really remember each other. Well, we didn't really interact a whole lot. You know, so it was it was kind of whatever. But anyway, so 
Then I met her one New Year's again, like actually fully met. And I was like, oh my goodness, okay. And she called me by my name. She's like, hey, Steve, obviously, you know, that's what you should call people by their names. Um, she was like, hey, Steve. And I was like, oh my goodness, I cannot remember your name. I'm so sorry. And um, so that was me fumbling, right? Anyway, next day she comes in and it's the day after New Year's, so you know, everybody's a little wonky. And uh, she comes in and I made it a point. I'm like, oh my goodness, Sierra, how are you doing today? And to my absolute dismay and also wonderment, she did not remember my name. Even though she had remembered the night before, she did not remember my name that day, which made me feel a million times better about forgetting her name the day before. So from there, we um, we started hanging out. And um, we were just kind of head over heels for each other from the beginning. So. It was great. It was awesome. Eventually, that same friend, T friend Tay, she was from New Orleans. So she uh, was moving back and convinced me and Sierra that we had to move back with her because we would be the time of our lives. And she convinced us. So we did. We moved to New Orleans together after maybe about five months of knowing each other. And we did have the time of our lives. It was great. And so we've gone through... That move to New Orleans, um, not knowing anybody, dealing with floods and robberies and all of the shenanigans that come along with New Orleans together. And uh, so we went down there. We were down there for three years. And now we're we're here, um, living in a van together. So this will be something totally new for us, for sure. And and I think it'll be a really great way to um, grow closer to each other. And also, I don't know. Almost like test the waters in a way. It's like if you can make it through this shit, then you can kind of do anything together. Steven is really, really great for, um, you know, getting you excited about great big grand ideas and adventures. Like I always want to see more. I really do. Every single time I go out hiking or I do something, Sierra gets so mad at me because I'm always just like, well, let's just like one, one more hill. Like, come on, just, just one more hill. And so, I don't know. I just. I really do. I always want to see everything else. Um, but besides that... One of the things that I was really excited about when when I thought about doing this, the van life thing, was the ability to connect more deeply with, with nature, because that's something that's really important to me, like I said, and also to find uh, inspiration, you know, creative inspiration in in nature, because it's something that I always have felt really, really strongly connected to and something that I've always been really inspired by. Obviously, COVID happened. And when COVID happened, even just right before, beginning of, it's, it's what, 2021 right now? So beginning of 2020, we had kind of sat down and we started thinking about our lives and being like, okay, well, what are we wanting to do? I had kind of um, exhausted some of my artistic options that I wanted to accomplish there in New Orleans. So I was looking for kind of a different change and new pace. Um, I've never really lived anywhere longer than three years consistently. So usually when I get about three years, I start to get a, a little stir crazy and um, I show what to do with myself. So, you know, I, it kind of, it really is the amount of energy that you're getting from your life. That's the energy that I think you can output into your creative endeavors, right? I think if maybe you were to just stay in the same place forever and not really be excited or inspired by your surroundings at all, then there's really not a whole lot that you can create and, and offer from that space. So we kind of started talking about doing the van thing because um, we both love traveling. Um, Sierra was constantly traveling because she uh, does all this yoga stuff. And so she was on the road a lot more than I was. Um, and it was trying to get into a point where we missed each other a lot. And it was, hey, well, let's figure out a way to do this together. And so we were both like, van, obviously, let's do the van life thing. Why not? Personally, I just really felt the need to to be mobile and to be, um, to be kind of more out in the world rather than secluded from it. So I'm a writer and a yoga teacher. By trade, I have um, sort of some online businesses that I run where I host uh, yoga classes. I'm really into um, natural magic, so like the phases of the moon, uh, the energies of the season, and things of that sort. So I teach classes based on that online mostly, um, and I do some freelance writing for some magazines and, and write some poetry as well. So that's how that's what I've been focusing on kind of over the the past year is really growing my own business I've I've kind of always worked freelance or, or independent for other people and I, I really wanted to start creating something of my own and create something that really aligned with my passions and, and my values 
I am currently trying to follow a lot of my art and inspiration that I've had throughout my life. Um, I finally made a point that was the big point for the van for me. Um, I do a lot of painting, I've done some clothing design, basically anything that you can think of to put images on something I've attempted. Um, a lot of it I've tried to start companies off of. I've tried to do multiple different facets of it, not really knowing and fully appreciating what I could be doing. And just so you guys can meet the other members of the crew, this is Dee. She loves oop, kisses and cuddles and chasing squirrels. Don't you, Dee? Yeah. And then that's Isabel. Izzy. Bless you. Izzy's the old girl of the group. But she's hanging on. She's our Baba Yaga. She's our old grandmother spirit guiding us and watching out for us. She's sad now because she doesn't know where Steven is because he went around the corner so I could film my thing. But these are the girls and they're with us all the time, everywhere. Beauty and grace. And I understand that it's a very uh, alternative, maybe slightly unorthodox way of living your life. And definitely explaining that <laughs> to my family that I was gonna live out of a car, basically. Um, they were a bit taken aback by it. You know, I, I could get by without hot water all the time. You know, I would rather be out in the world. I would rather be closer to nature. I would rather live my life out in the world as, as a part of the world rather than separated from it. If anything, I think we just want to inspire other people, you know, to go after their dreams or go after the things that inspire them and, and to never feel like you have to settle in your life. You know, a lot of times we're taught that there's sort of one way to do things and that that's all that you have offered to you. And, and we really see life as an ability to just create and to spread love um, and joy to other people. So that's what we've prioritized in our lives and your priorities don't have to be that, but just whatever they are, don't feel like you have to settle for anything. And if you really, really do want to do something with your life, um, then, you know, give yourself the time and the space to to really go after it and chase it and, and, and don't tell yourself that you can't, you know, because a lot of times it's, it's just that you're telling yourself that, right? And, and your possibilities are, are really endless if you look at it, so. So the van to me is this freedom point, this point of being able to um, eliminate a lot of my necessity to have to have so much reliance on a place and utilities and all of these other things. And then also if I do want to go travel somewhere to go see something to, you know, get inspired to do those artistic things, um, it's going to cost me a lot less and I'm probably going to be in it already. So I understand my artistic process and I understand the things that I need to go through. And that's why I'm here. I'm here because this is going to be my one big run, not probably not my one big run. I hate putting it that way, but this is going to be the time where I really dedicate most of my time and energy, whether it's photography, whether it's painting, whether it's graphic design, whether what, whatever thing comes up, whether it's writing, I mean, in, in anything at all, that's going to be creative. I'm basically going to take the time and really delve fully into it. And um, that way then I can really see where that's going to take. I can see the things that are gonna stick for me and my own personal endeavor of what I personally want to really accomplish. And the great part is, is I get to do it with my best friend. I get to do it with the person that always brings me up, that always is honest with me, the person that makes sure that I know the score while it's happening. So that's me. That's us. That's what we're doing. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll check back in. All right, y'all, so this is the end of our hike. It's the end of our introduction. Well, this is the outroduction part, the but it's the out, this is the outroduction of the introduction. Yeah, so it's also the end of the video. <laughs> but I hope you guys are tuned in. I hope you guys, if you did just recently discover us, go back and watch all of our old videos. They're, they're great. It's a- uh, You can watch us build the van. Yeah. 
see but, all of the bullshit we had to go through to get here. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't want to watch all that, um, then just stay tuned because it is no more build videos. It's just going to be a whole lot of us doing stuff and things and whatnot. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, like, subscribe, share, comment. Let us know if you know what a jumping choyo is and if I pronounce choyo right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that's all I got. You got anything Bye. else? the van build go back to week one of the van build it's our first video it's wonderful it's great and then i think it's only 21 22 videos from there if you if if you have an idea of why you want to binge watch our whole entire series go for it it's fun i promise um and yeah I'm, I'm super excited to be to be doing this it's something that i've kind of thought about for a while it's always really um kind of been on my mind but i never really thought that it would be something that I would do um, in this lifetime. If you want to see 